Namaste, everyone. So from question one spawned uh, a few additional questions about perception. And those questions are, how do you know what level of perception you are at? Does perception even really exist? If your idea of yourself is based on perception and your perception is incorrect, then who you think you are is an illusion. Or does any of this even exist? So some really deep questions. Depending on where you are looking from determines what you see. If you are at a lower level of perception, you see yourself as the mind and the body only. You are the person. You are the identity that has been given to you by other people, primarily your parents and teachers. You've accepted that and you've adopted that identity as your own. And what you see is that identity. Where you are seeing from is from the idea that you are that person. And from these lower levels of seeing, you think you cannot change. And you cannot see the broader aspect of consciousness. So, how do you know that what level of perception you are at? Quite honestly, I don't think it could be anything so much that is self-judged, especially at the lower levels, because the mind will easily trick you into believing something that's not true. It is also not wise for someone else to shape and form that identity for you and try to tell you what level of perception you're at. Keeping in mind that these levels of perception is only a, a temporary structure to try to uh, present something. The best thing to do, other than to guess what level of perception you are at, which I think when we complete this book, it would be good to have a some sort of graphic in the book that says these are typically the traits of each level of perception to try to help somebody uh, guide them into understanding. However, again, I don't want anyone to get too caught up in it or you know like it is when you have a rash on your leg and you google it and you diagnose yourself with all kinds of crazy stuff I don't want people to use the seven levels of perception as either a way to make themselves feel worse about where they're at or to falsely say oh I'm an enlightened being and I'm going to rule the world now and not fully understand what that state of existence is. Uh, typically, in 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 tradition, um, usually it is uh, uh, yoga gurus or even um, real, uh, you know uh, certain religious beings that you feel like you can trust. Uh, Maybe a certain spiritual psychologists are able to help assess and help you understand where you're at and how to move forward. So, does perception even exist? That's such a good question. And 
the the straightforward answer to that question is actually no perception does not exist but because we sense a feeling of separation we feel our life is We feel our life is separated into subject-object form. <coughs> I am the subject, and I'm viewing this tree. It is the object. And I and this tree are different. There's the perceiver. There's the perceived, and in between is the perception. But perception is an illusion. Not quite an illusion like... When you see a cat running through your backyard at midnight, and you claim it to be a fox... That's one type of an illusion. You saw something that was not true. We have agreed as humans on a certain level of perception. We have agreed that I am here, the tree is there. We've agreed that, that that's a tree and that I'm a person. So we've agreed on these perceptions. They may alter a little bit from person to person. In, in the human sense of things... If we are at level three, where the majority of society is at, it is perfectly okay to say, I am me, and that is the tree, and I see the tree. But if, if you are, are looking from a place of a very high a spiritual awareness, you begin to see that there is no separation between you and the tree. That it's energy floating through energy, floating through energy, and it's just all one conglomerate of energy. Everything is one. Not as an idea, not as a concept of the mind, but that is what your perception literally becomes. And when it becomes that, it would not be fully correct to call it perception. Because if the subject and object become one, perception does no longer take place. You are everything. Everything is you. You are that. But I feel like offering uh, this type of truth uh, to everyone, many people will hear that and either not understand it or think it's the craziest thing that they've ever heard. Because the mind will say, well, if you and the tree are one, then make the tree move. Or if you and that dog over there are one, then, then do, make the dog do a backflip or something. Because that type of understanding is beyond the conceptual mind. In fact, it can't even be grasped by the mind. It's not even technically an understanding. It's not knowledge. It's it's experience. It's even beyond experience. It's not even experience. Because experience requires someone who is having the experience and that which what they are experiencing, which is still separate. So does perception even exist? It, this, is, this is the best way that, that we need to tackle this question. There are two types of truths in the human existence. 
relative truths and absolute truths. Relative truth is, is that a tree? Yes. Relative to my understanding and knowledge, that is a tree. I am me. We are separate. I am the perceiver. That is the perceived. And what occurs between is perception. Relatively, that is the truth. So does perception exist? On a relative level, yes, it does exist. Nothing wrong with it. I'm not saying that perception is wrong or bad or that if you perceive things that you are have that you're not an awakened person. I'm not saying that. Because there's a difference between being an awakened person, a self-realized person, and an enlightened being. This is why they never say an enlightened person. But instead, they say enlightened being. Because once you are at the state of enlightenment, the personhood has fallen off completely. Even if you view an enlightened person and you still see a person, they're still eating, they're still sleeping, they're still um, uh, doing what they do to upkeep the human body. And in comparison to someone else, you say, that's a person, that's a person, that's a person. They're all people. But from the perspective and the perception of the enlightened being, the person has dropped off. It has fallen away. And they are just beingness that has become one with all things. So there doesn't, for them, there is no separation between. Uh, them and the tree. Uh, it is one creation to them. But I want to be careful not to overly extend that type of speaking to an audience who is not ready to hear that. Because for a lot of people, that's crazy talk. Sh you know, close the book. I'm done with this. This is craziness. But all the ascended masters, Jesus, Buddha, uh, Ramana Maharshi, um, uh, Yogananda, uh, Maharaj, all of these, I mean, the list can just go on and on and on and on and on. All of these beings were enlightened beings who became one with everything. And yes, some of them could move their energy into other objects. It was very easy for them. Uh, Jesus is a good example. But without getting too much into that, does perception exist? On an absolute, on an absolute level, perception does not exist. Because, because an absolute truth... There is a falseness in believing that we are separate. There's an illusion in believing that we are identities in the first place. We have created this illusion. If we go back to Adam and Eve, and Eve was tempted to take a bite of the apple to know good and evil. Uh, she was tempted to know what it was like to come out of enlightenment. And to see what it was like to live an illusion. And so, in an absolute sense, our identities, our personhood, our personalities, it's an illusion that is perceiving something. So whatever comes forth out of that is also false. We have to discard the personhood, the personality. Not literally, but we have to... It's like waking up one morning and not picking your identity up and just existing and just being. Just being one with the universe. To, For that to occur in a fixed state or a solid continuous state is what is called enlightenment F 
for the rest of the world, their false identity is viewing other false identities. And that perception is taking place. And that perception is an illusion. On the relative sense, it's okay and everything's fine. It's totally okay to call that a tree. But in the absolute understanding of it, it's not even an understanding. Again, it's not, it's not knowledge. It's pure awareness. There is no perceiver, perceived, or perception. But yet you exist. Not as an individual, but yet this awareness exists. Which is why, if you think you're just this person, this separate entity, and I say to you, find out who you really are. What I'm saying is, find out that you're actually the awareness that exists before you were ever born. And now the awareness has moved into the body, mind, system. But now the awareness has taken a back seat and you claim to be the body and mind. And not only do you claim to be the body and mind, but you've gotten yourself into trouble because there's so many likes and dislikes Chasing after pleasure, avoiding pain, all of these things. And it creates a life of suffering. Um, there was a third question uh, for this video. I don't forgot what it is now. Uh, do you even exist? Does existence exist? Well... I have these spontaneous reflections quite often where I recognize that existence doesn't even exist because there's no such thing as non-existence. If there was such a thing as non-existence, then existence and non-existence, it's here and it's gone. But that is not absolute reality. There is, there is no such thing as non-existence. There's transcendence. Your awareness transcends from one thing to another. But it does never stop not existing. Nothing ever st stops existing. So if nothing ever stops existing, there's no such thing as non-existence. If there's no such thing as non-existence, there's really no such thing as existence. Everything just is not trying to get too jumbled up with words here or confuse anybody. But something can only exist if there's an opposite to it. Good and bad, black and white, hot and cold. On a relative sense, do you exist? Of course. I'm not saying you don't exist or that I don't exist or this microphone doesn't exist or this video doesn't exist in the relative sense it exists because we've created a concept and we've labeled it and we've created a society out of concepts and labels we've created a world we've created a universe out of concepts and labels so different we say things exist if a star burns out we say it doesn't exist anymore but that's not true on an absolute sense so I think the terms relative and absolute uh, they're not my terms. Um, I've read many books that use those terms. I think they're really good terms to differentiate uh, truth on the relative level and on an absolute level. On a relative level, I exist. The tree exists. Um, Genevieve exists in New York. Um, the, the, the emails and messages we send back and forth, they exist. It all exists on a relative le level. But on an absolute level, without a perceiver, because there can be an awareness without a perceiver. If there's awareness but no perceiver, then the awareness is of everything, of the one. And in that, it's what... Um, the famous uh, Indian scholar, uh, Jiddu Krishnamurti, wrote a book called You Are the World. 
Meaning, you're not separate from the world, you are the world. Because it's all one. Awareness can exist without there being a perceiver or perception. So, it is possible that you can be aware of everything. But in order to do so, you have to let go of the, the you are aware. It, there's just awareness. It's, it's very hard to explain mentally for the mind. In fact, only really when you experience it can you come away from that experience understanding a part of it. Because if you experience it and then come away from it, you're still not there yet. Because if you experience it and come away from it, there's still a separation. But what's happening is, and the same with the seven levels of separation, when we're down at the, at the bottom of the barrel, and I don't, I don't try to say that negatively towards anybody if they feel that that's where they're at. Your awareness of the oneness is so dark, you think there's no such thing. When you're an enlightened being, you simply are just that. In fact, let's just go ahead and say there's seven levels of human perception, but let's just say there's something even above that, and that's when the whole thing is discarded and disappears, and you are awareness itself. Let's even say that that's level eight, but we can't call it a level because that level doesn't exist at that point. Perception doesn't exist. None of it exists. But yet, you are there, even though it doesn't exist. So, I feel like all of this talk here could easily be confusing uh, to most people. And I get that because it sounds like I'm saying a lot of things that are contradicting themselves. But it all depends on where you're looking from. From level one, you feel very much a personality and identity. The more you move, the more your consciousness expands. But in that expansion, it doesn't mean you're going you're gonna to look like someone else who has an expanded consciousness. That's one of the things that I want to touch on. <clears throat> because I think people see this, you know, enlightened being sitting in a certain position in India underneath a tree. And they think, well, I don't want to be enlightened because I don't want to just sit underneath a tree in lotus position. But there are many examples of enlightened beings who uh, continued to exist in their own unique way. Uh, uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj. After his uh, enlightenment, he continued to smoke cigarettes because he saw there was, there was, there was no need to change anything once he became enlightened. And he just flowed in his body as his body was before that. So, um, there are other examples. Uh, Mother Teresa is a good example. Uh, Mother Teresa was an enlightened being who put all her efforts into uh, loving and taking care of orphans. And this to her was her path and her purpose. So, you know, uh, people who become enlightened may continue to look on the outside they may continue to look like a soccer mom or a hockey mom or a, a cheerleading coach or a football coach or um, a teacher at school or someone who works in a factory or a fisherman um, or a hunter a lot of people think when you become enlightened, you're automatically, you know, a vegan or something or whatever. Uh, all of this is just an, is part of an illusion of what people think enlightenment is. Uh, so, uh, 
to, to reach a state of awakening or self-realization or enlightenment doesn't necessarily mean you're going to live your life as a, a monk or a nun or you're going to go and retreat into the woods. Some people do. Some people do, but they were already inclined to do that. When they shed the personality, it naturally moves them into that direction. Um, some people are naturally very motherly. Uh, Amma is a good example. Amma, uh, they call her the hugging saint. You know, on her enlightenment, what naturally was a part of who she was came into full fruition. And it, it, it only merely looks like she's still a person doing person things. But she's just energy floating through energy floating through energy uh, for a lack of better way of explaining it. So... Uh, that's very important because I think some people might even be uh, put off a little bit by the thought of enlightenment or self-realization as something that's going to take them away from things they love. Uh, Papa G. Uh, they said Papa G still loved to go and watch uh, sports and things like that. Um, uh, th there are a lot of different... Um, case examples that I have studied and read. I also know uh, my own experience, which is, of course, much more profound than anything I've read because it's an experience that I have had. That some things fall away, but some things stay. Uh, and the things that stay are the things that are the most natural to you. The difference is that your perception as a limited person is now gone and your awareness of your beingness is what is there. On the outside, it looks like a person that's still eating and sleeping and having sex or whatever they want to do. But on the inside, it's all very detached. It's detached and it's unfiltered and it's just flowing very naturally. So we'll leave it at there uh, for this video, and uh, I have uh, 400 more questions to answer, uh, but it's definitely very natural for me to uh, speak about this. So, um, you know, hopefully that sheds some light on, on these questions, uh, and perhaps that spawns even more questions, which is awesome. Uh, I would love to put this uh, book together with thousands of questions and, you know, condensed in a way that, you know, many of the same questions get condensed into one question that fulfills all of those questions. Uh, because ultimately all of this is about you being you and you discovering who you are before you were told what to be. It's about you being happy and living your best life, your most truthful life, exactly how you want to. There may be limitations in, in, the, in the environment. I'm not saying that there's not. But even to see the limitations as perfect as they are uh, and seeing yourself as perfect as you are. So um, on to the next questions, on to the next video. Namaste.